Hello girlies, welcome back to No Picnies Allowed. Um, we're going to watch this video about how romantic love is a scam. Let's keep watching. In loving under the aegis of a philosophy we could call romanticism. And romanticism is, is a vision of love with very particular assumptions. Let me run through a few of them. There's one soulmate for everybody. You're gonna find this soulmate. You're gonna find them through slightly mysterious ways possibly through almost something almost quasi divine like you'll feel pulled you'll meet them at the supermarket checkout line the nightclub and without even knowing too much about them you will sense that they're your destiny so you'll feel impelled towards somebody that you don't necessarily know too much of a, a, a force will pull you and you will feel this is the one and they will be an angel literally a sort of descended being from from another another world um the romantics were very very keen on the notion that you didn't have to know someone too well to understand them even speaking not very much the connection will be even deeper um the romantics also thought that love and sex absolutely belong together and that, that, that you couldn't have a millimeter of disjuncture between the romance is not real but wait 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 let me say it better before y'all eat me up and tell me how this one time 10 years ago a man bought you flowers the concept of romance as we know it today is another tool of patriarchy Romance is what has allowed common men to have access to women's sexuality and fertility. Romantic love was created for beta males so they can have access to women, right? If alpha males had to compete with beta males when it came to women, alpha males would win every single time. So they had to create a system where all men had access to women. It's all a tool, you guys. That's why you see all these Disney movies, these romantic movies, The Notebook, all these movies centered around romantic love. So as a woman is growing up, you know, a lady's growing up, her whole life is centered around cooking, cleaning, waiting around for this prince and charming that's going to come through the night and whisk her away. I used to wait for that all the time in college. I used to wait for a guy to just show up knocking at my door with a white horse and he was going to save the day. That, <laughs> that doesn't exist, ladies. There's no one coming to save you. There's not, there's not a guy that's going to come in your life and he's going to know all the beautiful poetry and he's going to have all the money and he's going to say all the right things and, you know, he's going to be a, he's just going to be this great guy out of the movies. He doesn't exist. It was created for us to be lured in. Yeah, it was. Anyways, let's keep watching. Because if it were not for romance and love, women would still be going after the best and the brightest and would leave most men out of their dating pool. And do you want to know the perfect place to observe this? Go watch a few episodes of Cheaters because I guarantee that you will see a pattern. The woman who lives with the cheater always complains about how he doesn't do these nice things that he's doing for the other woman anymore. He doesn't buy her flowers anymore. He doesn't buy her gifts anymore. He doesn't even say kind words to her, to her anymore. You wanna know why? Because he already used his romance tool on you and it already worked. He already got you. He already has access to your fertility and access to sex with you. He doesn't have to romance you anymore because he already got what he wanted. Romance is a tool of patriarchy that allows common, ordinary men access to our reproduction and our sexuality. This might sound like a conspiracy theory, but isn't the concept of romance and love, romantic love, the biggest propaganda to keep women voluntarily in serving their patriarchal gender roles. Now, hear me out, because back in the days, women had to like stay in these doomed somewhat relationship where her husband was not providing, he was like just incompetent, not raising the kids properly, not um carrying out his part of the deal, as in being a provider, head of the household, protector, whatnot. And like women had to do that. Women had to remain in that role because they didn't have any other choice. Like that was what was expected of them. Like it's not like they could just pack and go. 
But nowadays, with this concept of love, this unwavering love, women voluntarily stay in relationships where the men is clearly where like the men is not clearly keeping their part of the deal. They're not providing. They're not loving. They're not being good like fathers, husbands, like you name it. And women stay and like support them like in their lows because they love them. Because they love them, you sacrifice their your in, entire life, and voluntarily remain in the role that the patriarchal society expects you to remain in, because you love him, all because you loved a boy. So this seems like a good food for thought for us to think about. So one thing I noticed in all of my relationships with men. In the beginning, they're super sweet. You're going on dates. You have flowers. You have little cute gifts. They're texting you all the time. They're complimenting you all the time. They're saying all these sweet nothings to you. But towards the middle or to the ending of the relationship, you see the real version of them. They don't give you flowers. They don't give you compliments for no reason. They don't make you feel as special. Um as the beginning of the relationship. They just don't do those things. And so the woman in the middle or to the ending of the relationship, she's fighting to get that same version of that guy because she's like, oh, but he showed me uh, all of these great qualities and now he's not doing those things, right? So that's why you always hear podcasts and movies and shows and YouTube channels always showing women how to quote unquote keep a man because now she's chasing back for that um chasing back that same validation that she got from that man from the very beginning she she's chasing that treatment she's chasing that love she's chasing that those gifts that she got she's chasing that romantic guy from the beginning but he was never that guy that was just one of the tools he had to use in order to get you and not that he got you, he could say, oh, but we're in love. Even if he's not doing anything that he promised that he would be doing. Even if he's not getting flowers. Even if he's not paying the bills. Even if he's not getting you gifts. Even if he's not treating you nice. He's still going to be like, oh, but we love each other. Love doesn't mean shit if a man can't back it up and show it. Let's keep watching. Romantic love was really invented by lower status men for lower status men, so that they might be able to compete with higher status men in the sexual marketplace for women. Because they didn't have the resources and the status and the opportunity that most women are looking for in their partners, they invented an intangible romantic love that they argued was even more special and valuable than all of that mere stuff. It's kind of a spell that romantic lovers attempt to cast over their love objects. However, it's a tenuous, fragile spell that can really be broken at any time. So romantic love actually works only to the extent that the romantic lover succeeds in drawing the love object away from anything that would remind her, essentially, that the emperor has no clothes sort of attempting to draw the woman away from the world into this little universe of two, where everything that we need is in each other's eyes. Forget about everything else. Look only at me. It's a hypnotic spell whose objective is to lure the love object away from anything that could break the spell. That's why romance is generally a strategy for those who can't compete successfully in the world yet a group that is overpopulated by young men. It's very, very hard to be a young man in this world, let me tell you. They're incompetent and inexperienced, so men can't do anything with them. And they're poor and low status, so women don't want anything with them. No young man is the king. And if they can't rule in the real world, one of their sexual strategies is to kind of hypnotize women with the fantasy of romantic love into following them out of the real world and into the universe of two, where he can be king. Do you understand now? 
You ever notice how when a man doesn't have any materials to bring to you, he always leads with romantic love. Oh, but what about love? <sighs> ladies, ladies, I just hate I had to learn this late. Like, it's not late for me because I'm still in my 20s, but I just wish I knew this from the very beginning of my 20s that love uh doesn't exist like romantic love like love for your children love for family exists but love for a man unconditional love is non-existent um and he doesn't have that unconditional love for you either don't argue with me argue with your mama if men could genuinely love women there wouldn't be so much chaos in the world and I don't want to hear about your man that loved you for 10 years and y'all got three kids. I don't want to hear about it. Um, so, yeah, let's keep watching. Yes, this is why I agree with Toni Morrison's statement that romantic love is the most destructive idea in the history of human thought. Romantic love is a psychological weapon that's been used to brainwash women and men into believing that love is outside of them never therefore distracting them from ever cultivating a loving relationship with themselves once again it's another ploy to turn us into the perfect consumer by externalizing and outsourcing our social and emotional needs we're pretty much conditioned from movies media tv shows books etc and childhood to outsource all of our social emotional needs and give another person the impossible task of fulfilling them and the biggest problem of all is that we don't even know ourselves, who we are and what we want. How can we advocate for ourselves in a relationship? How can we even attract the right partner? How can we even end up in a compatible relationship when we don't even know our own needs? When we haven't taken the time to investigate like what's right for us? When we are going after the idea of love sold to us from the media, it's just another recipe for self-sabotage and countless failures and frustration. And we wonder why we're in a loneliness epidemic. We're wondering why one in three marriages end in divorce. It's because we don't actually know what the fuck we're doing. And we're literally going ass backwards into everything. Because everything we were taught is bullshit. There is no such thing as true love. Well, actually, let me take a step back. I don't believe in the type of love that's been shoved down our throats since childhood. One of the most common things I hear women say after breaking up with their boyfriends is the spark just wasn't there anymore. Or I feel like we just grew apart. But what is the spark? And why did you allow yourselves to grow apart when you could have grown together? We have been raised to romanticize everything. And we've also been raised in a time of unlimited choices. And both of those combine into a bad cocktail of unrealistic expectations. Guess what? There probably isn't going to be an orchestra playing in the background when you realize you love somebody and as your relationship becomes more predictable and there are less rocks to turn over it's not going to be nearly as exciting as it was in the beginning and you know what else you can actually decide to grow with your partner rather than on your own you can both pick a spot and aim for it together and when you find that shared goal nothing can stop you from building the strongest relationship imaginable in pursuit of it that's what love is it's finding someone you're passionate about and finding happiness and true partnership rather than a fiery dopamine fueled romance Romantic love is the weakest form of love, and I need you to listen, think about it, and ask yourself some questions. You know how in almost every romantic movie, the kind of love that they promote is always romantic love? And guess what? Romantic love typically fizzles into nothingness. It's like one day people are in love, and then the next day they completely hate each other. It does not last, and the media knows this, and they profit off of it because with romantic love, the partners can buy each other things and get together. They make the most money out of romantic love, to be honest. It is literally the most unstable form of love. These movies and shows convince us that it's everything that we'll ever need in this world. And what people fail to realize is more powerful than romantic love is community love or communal love. Because if we had community love, we will take care of each other. There will probably be less war, less famine, less trafficking because people are not going to look at another person as, I don't know you, I don't care about you. There will be less evil in this world because you look at your neighbor and you actually care about them or you build some form of relationship with your neighbors or even with other cities and countries. And if that was promoted more, this world would be less broken really because romantic love doesn't last and it just consists of two people typically and it just fizzles off and i feel like the media knows exactly what they're doing and that's why they never promote communal love 
because they know they don't want us to be together. They don't want us to unite as a people. And just to add to the discourse that women have been having around romantic love being fake and invented in order to trap women, I just want to say not only are you correct, it's actually even worse than that. Because men didn't even make this up. And as per usual, they are just copying somebody else's idea. Animals have had the ability to mate for life as a survival tactic for a long time before men ever caught on to the fact that that could be a good survival tactic. And because men's laziness and selfishness truly knows no bounds, they took it one step further. Because you see, animals who mate for life, they offer each other very much a value and survival proposition for the male animals. That's not a survival proposition for the female animals. You have to understand this as a woman. I need you to really to keep this in your mind at all times. The female species of a population is naturally going to be well protected and taken care of because it is responsible for the reproduction of the entire species. Animal communities where the male animals don't contribute anything to the community but genetic material and or perhaps sometimes violence in a setup where the males are predisposed to be you know, violent and domineering and high testosterone or whatever, in most of those communities, they only keep one or two around for that reason. And now we can tell, we can look at statistics and we can tell that human males are very violent indeed. And we can tell by looking at other statistics that unlike the males of those species that mate for life, human males um, are also not good at parenting. They're not good at raising and protecting their offspring, which is typically the value proposition in a mate for life type relationship. To add on to what she's saying, that's why a lot of women are married, but they're single in their marriages. I'm sure we've heard of that already. A lot of single women in marriages. They're raising the child, they're cooking, they're cleaning, they're rearing the child, they're helping them with homework, things of that nature. And all the man does is come home from work, put his feet on the ottoman and watch his NFL. And that's all they do. If that's a life you want to sign up for because of romantic love, and the romantic love is not going to even last for a long time based on what everybody's telling you and what I'm telling you, then go ahead. Go ahead. You know, it's your funeral, not mine. It's your life. Anyways, y'all, subscribe and like. <laughs> subscribe and like.